Welcome everybody, welcome to Church Online. So good to have you with us. And my name is Braden and I'm the Next Generation Pastor. And I love that you're joining us today. Well, it's an exciting one today because it's week one of expansion. And here at Life, expansion this year is all about impacting the one, the power of one. We want to dive into what God can do with what is in our hands because often we look at what is in our hands and we think we can't do much. But when we look at what's in our hands with a God perspective on it, we see that the ones in our life can be impacted by His power, His glory and His grace. So today we're going to be hearing from our senior pastor, Pastor Luke de Jong. So let's get into it right now. So good to be in God's house and a huge warm welcome to every single campus. Can we take a moment, put our hands together for all of our volunteers and thank them. Come on, for serving, for creating a platform for you and I to step in. We love you all and we're so, so thankful for you all. But we are in expansion and I'm excited. And if you're new to life, then expansion for us is a time in the year where we take a moment to update and make uh, everyone a part of our family aware of what we are passionate about, not just doing, but what we are involved in doing outside the four walls of our church. And uh, if you were a part of expansion last year, then I'm just gonna take a moment right across life to update everyone as to where we got to in 2023 slash 24. Would you like to know? So we actually had 1,295 partners, expansion partners, which is an individual, a couple, or a family that said, we're in and we're able to raise $4.2 million. Come on, can we thank God for that? That is a pretty amazing, amazing statistic. And you'll see on the screen what that was able to do. These are a small few things uh, that we were able to achieve. There's a lot more behind this, but we saw 475,000 plus students fed through the Healthy Lunches program, which is pretty cool. We saw, that's that. just so you know, 475, that's almost half a million. It's kind of a big number, which is awesome. Kids weren't going hungry at school, and we're believing to continue to do more this year. But you'll see on the screen, through our community kitchens, we served 80,000 hot meals throughout the year, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, God is good. And you'll see down here, uh, there is... There, there was the opportunity here in New Zealand to, there was 32,005 Christmas boxes. Went to families, went to homes that were in need this Christmas where we just heard so many testimonies of people saying, you know, th this was the glimmer of hope that brought a smile into our Christmas this year. And if you're a part of expansion, you're a part of seeing people's lives impacted and changed with the reality of Jesus. So I think we should just one more time thank God for everything that took place, which is pretty, pretty special. And Whatever campus you may be in, whether you're in a local or online, obviously our website and that magazine has a whole lot more detail in regards to what we're believing for. And over the next three weeks, we're gonna unpack expansion. But at a high level, we're believing that those 1,295 partners this year would actually grow to 2,000 partners and we would see $5 million raised. And that really actually gives us the ability to not just achieve what we achieved last year, but to expand to grow and to press into where we believe God is taking us. And before you get too carried away with the numbers, can I just say, expansion is not just about numbers. Expansion is not just about statistics. It's not just about finances, but truly expansion is all about people. People like you and I that have discovered the wonder of Jesus that we would go out into their lives and have an opportunity presented to them, whether it's through a school lunch, whether it's through a hot meal in our community kitchens, whether it's through one of the Christmas boxes, or the many other things we're a part of, that people would discover that there is a God in heaven who loves and cares for them, and that as a church, we're not here just to have a happy, clappy club on a Sunday, sing some great Christian karaoke and be blessed and walk out. No, no, that we would actually be people that not just keep Jesus to ourselves, but live in a way where we would see the impact and change in our generation with the reality of the one, his name is King Jesus. And so we're gonna go on a journey today. I pray this establishes the next few weeks for you and I, because if you were here at the beginning of the year, we kicked off this year with the idea that God was calling us as a church that this would be a year of the one. Simply put, I put it in a package or in a way in February where Jesus would be the only one you and I follow. Yeah. 
There's many other voices that are vying for our attention, but we would come back to the voice of God, that we would come back to his will, his word, his way, that Jesus would be our one and that we would go on the journey that this year we would open up our hearts to the one he puts on our heart or the ones in our world, and that is why there is power in the one. We're gonna read a story in a moment known as the boy with the five loaves and the two fish. And if you were in Sunday school, I'm sure you would have heard it taught many moons ago. But I'm gonna read it because I felt like God draw me back to the scripture for expansion for you and for me because you can so easily just dismiss what we read in the Bible as a cool story. But as I've meditated on it recently, I've come to discover that there is actually far more power in the one than we realize. And so if you've got your Bible, I want you to turn to page 857. (laughs) If you don't, I've got the words on the screen. And whatever campus you're at, I want you to capture the heart of this story. It says, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill. He sat down with his disciples around him and it was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, one of Jesus' disciples, Jesus asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Shot Jesus. <laughs> Philip replies with the question of where in a way that is pretty similar to, I think, how you and I would reply with a how. Yeah. Jesus, even if we worked for months, <laughs> we wouldn't have enough money to feed everyone here. Then Andrew, another disciple, who keeps getting known as Simon Peter's brother, because Simon Peter's the cool one, he speaks up, he says, Jesus, there's a young boy here. This young boy has five barley loaves and two fish. But then he makes this observation, what good is it with such a crowd amongst us? Jesus tells everyone to sit down, and so they sat on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the five loaves, he gave thanks to God and distributed them to the people. Afterwards, he did the same with the fish. And I want you to capture this. They all ate as much as they wanted. Not all 12 disciples, all 5,000 men plus women plus children with five loaves and two fish. Verse 12, after everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by all the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. Isn't it interesting that not only did one meal feed conservatively 10,000 people that day, there wasn't just a physical miracle, hunger being met, there was a spiritual miracle where people saw that Jesus is the answer. Could it be true that expansion is not just about facts and figures, it's about people, people like you and I that one day we were lost, but now I've found that they would discover that surely Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So if you're taking notes, because we all know if you take notes, you go to heaven. (laughs) I've titled the message, The Holy Happy Meal. The Holy Happy Meal. Father, I thank you that wherever we might find ourselves, whatever campus we may be in, Lord God, whether we like McDonald's or we don't, we just pray right now, that as we gather around your word, that the impact of this testimony, this story, this reality of what took place would not just be ink on page, but it would be your word, your revelation to our lives, to our heart, 
Father, I pray that we would see your heart for humanity. We would know that expansion is not just a campaign. (laughs) Expansion is actually who we are as followers of Jesus. And I pray that today, this wouldn't just be another message I preach or another message we hear, but you would speak into every one of our hearts in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. amen. I don't know if you've heard these famous words from your children like I continually hear. Dad! I'm starving. I'll never forget it because there was one moment that really hit home. Um, I was less gracious, let's put it that way. We were day 12 of a 14 day fast. And let me tell you, the last thing you wanna hear when you're 12 days in of a 14 day fast is your kids complaining that they think they're starving when they've been eating the whole time. Starving? I'll show you starving. I'm down five kgs, champion. (laughs) And there is this response in humanity when there is a hunger to get a little on edge. Maybe you got that friend. You know that one friend? If they don't get fed, they get hangry. No elbows, just (laughs) they know. (laughs) But on the contrary, isn't it interesting that they're is a satisfaction that takes place when we are full. Maybe you can identify not with the dad I'm starving reality, but the one of Christmas dinner, because you've already had Christmas breakfast, you've had Christmas lunch, and you could have been rolled out of the front door after Christmas lunch, but you go to another family member's house and it's Christmas dinner, and now you're really calling Uber to get you home, you're so full. (laughs) There is a satisfaction when you are full. There is a unease when you are empty. It's interesting to me because we find in this story two disciples with very different responses. We find Philip, and Philip is a great disciple. I'm not hating on him, but Philip presents Jesus with an obstacle Whereas Andrew presents Jesus with an opportunity. I want you to capture this because they were there in the same moment, presented with the same need, but how they saw and what they saw dictated the level of their response. You see, for you and I, we can look at something like 2,000 partners or $5 million or hundreds of thousands of meals and they'll just be numbers and they might even be numbers that we feel are out of our reach. But I've come to discover as Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, as followers of Christ, we are called to live by what? Faith, not by sight. And where Philip said, you and I couldn't work for months to gather enough income to pay for the food to feed the crowd, Andrew said, here's a little guy. Quick, grab his happy meal. And in his happy meal, (laughs) cold fries, chicken nuggets, sweet and sour sauce, no toy, rip off. (laughs) And he arrests the situation with what there was. Now, not for a moment do I think Andrew saw the boy and said, come here, give me that. (laughs) But the boy offers up the little that he has. And he says, hey, it ain't much. But I believe the boy got to a point where he realized this isn't lack, this is little. And the little in the hands of Jesus we discover, became a whole lot. See, I want you to capture this because most of us, me included, would be like Philip. In our climate, in our day, in our age right now, we know there is plenty of need. The numbers are out there. (laughs) And when Jesus comes and asks a question of where are we going to buy the food, it's interesting to me. He asks where, which is a silly question if you know where they were located because there was nowhere they could get to just go and buy the food, even if they had the money, to get it there in time to feed the crowd. But Jesus was not looking for food. 
He was not looking for resource in that moment. He was looking for faith. I want to read it again. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people and they were coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? For he was testing Philip because Jesus is the man and he already knows what's going to take place. There was no Uber Eats. (laughs) There was no ability to get the resource, let alone the food, to feed the large gathering, and that is why Philip replies, even if we were able to work for months, Jesus, we wouldn't have enough. He replies with a how, where Jesus wasn't looking for the how. He was looking for the where, and newsflash, he is the where. You see, we look at our lives, I look at my own life, and we look at the lack or our little as lack, rather than our little as an opportunity. You see, the truth is, right throughout Scripture, the reality is God always takes what is insufficient and he uses it to accomplish his purpose. Think about it. Abram Sarai, he takes an elderly couple, (laughs) childless couple, beyond childbearing years couple and he promises and delivers to give them the generations. In fact, the Bible says that they would have children more numerous than the stars. In Acts, we find an insignificant bunch of you and I's at 120 in an upper room and Jesus through his spirit, as God sends Holy Spirit into that room, ignites a fire in these 120, and straight away the birthing of the global church is realized. So much so that it says the 120 went to 3,000, the 3,000 to 5,000, and now the billions that live on planet Earth today. And if we're not careful, We just see expansion as a bunch of numbers or something someone else does. But I love expansion because what it does is it takes us from the reality of this is a church we go to and moves us to this is a house I built. And I hope you capture my heart in all of this because God can always take whatever is given in faith and multiply its impact beyond its natural reality. Because God is a God of multiplication. I want you to capture the significance of this multiplication moment. Verse eight, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with the five loaves and two fish, but what good is that to the crowd? I mean, it's a fair and reasonable question to round off the statement, but then Jesus says, just tell everyone to sit down, take a chill pill. So they all sat on the grassy slope, There was 5,000 men, and then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterwards, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. And then after everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples to do the mahi and gather up the leftovers so that nothing would go to waste. See, this boy realized that this meal in his hands could feed him. But he realized that this meal, although it had worth in his hands, was worth far more in the hands of Jesus. This is why today my heart would be you capture the reality of what expansion looks like in the hands of Jesus. You see, we find this young boy who was willing to trust Jesus with the little that he had, and so now we have to ascertain that not only did the 5,000 men, but the women and children that were represented there were fed, we have to realize that what size of reality the boy had in his hands was actually irrelevant. What was relevant was his willingness to bring his happy meal (laughs) and to trust it to Jesus. I'm sure the boy acknowledged, I don't have much, but he also acknowledged what I do have is more than enough for Jesus. 
And I've found in my life, time and time again, whatever campus you're at, I want you to understand God will always use our sacrifice to shape our heart and to advance his kingdom. And I have no doubt, practically speaking, that boy went from comfortable in that moment to uncomfortable. He went to having having control to having no control, to having sustenance to now having no sustenance. But all the way along, we start to discover that not only did he give Jesus a chance, but what would have fed him, scholars would say, it was around a portion of one meal size. What would have fed him in that moment actually turned into not just the feeding of everyone, but as we read, it fed everyone so much so that they all ate as much as they wanted. I want you to capture this. So the boy could have eaten, but the truth is the boy did eat. And he didn't just get fed a meal portion. It was the greatest experience for this young boy seeing it happen. But I think what was even greater personally to him was the fact that any young boy would just love to eat till they can eat no more. And so what would have been enough to satisfy one meal, now he was looking for a couch to lie on because he had eaten so much he had the food baby going on, just as every other individual in that place. And it got me thinking, it's the reality of how God works, right? When we trust him at his word and his way, we always receive his reality. An expansion could just be a bunch of numbers, $5 $5 million, 2,000 partners, 35,000 Christmas boxes this year, and the list goes on, but the reality for you and I is not one of just big numbers, but a personal invitation to ask ourselves the question, what do I have in my hand? Yeah, right. Or more importantly, whose hands are my happy meal? You see, it's not one that's just collective, and I love that we can collectively come together, but it's one of an invitation where Jesus is at the scene of a great need, and he's presented with an obstacle and an opportunity. And when presented with an opportunity, the need is not only met, but an abundance for everyone there and a doggy bag for all 12 disciples to go home with. Expansion is about people, and expansion is about Jesus wanting to use you and me. And there's an amazing couple in our church, been a part of life a long time, Pete and Rita, and I'm gonna ask you to be encouraged by this incredible, powerful testimony of what God's done and is doing through them. Why don't you check out the screen? Hi, I'm Pete and this is Rita and uh, we've been at Life uh, 28 years now. Been around a long time and uh, seen a lot of change and uh, things over those years. A few years ago, uh, we heard that Life Tauranga was starting and we went home, we were talking about it, we're definitely praying about it and really felt that we, um, that Jesus wanted us to commit to Life Tauranga and building that that church down there and it was a real challenge for us to kind of uh, accept because we we live in Auckland, we still live in Auckland and we travel down to Tauranga every week. How that is outworked is actually in creating home for people to either either come in and respond to Jesus, to um, get to know him, to advance their, on their journey. We've just always felt that, you know, life is our home and when you commit to being a home, you want to make it better. With our time, um, with our giftings, whether it's in production or whether it's in kids' church or in ops or whatever, however I could be used. And it's a very biblical principle that, you know, if you you don't hold too tightly, you, you give what you can give. About 2016 or or whenever the legacy offering was coming about, we really felt the Lord had given us a massive amount on our heart to commit to over the three and a half years. And so that was a real stepping out in faith moment for us. Definitely going, oh my gosh, this is, um, 
yeah, unfathomable, but at the same time felt a real peace around it because he gave us our strategy. We really felt God had called us to that goal. Yeah. And so, like Pete said, strategically set up an AP, do your, you know, all those things that you can do to, to reach that goal. And man, the, yeah, just after that time going, man, we did it, it was amazing. Yeah. And so now when we're going through those times, we can look back and go, God was so faithful then and he will yeah. be faithful now. And that's just, it's amazing testimony to sit here today, even in, in the building yeah. where we've signed into um, today to see that fulfilled and see this amazing facility and just how it impacts um, so many people's lives every Sunday. Uh, but we look forward for that in Tauranga, yeah. you know? When I think about Tauranga expanding, I just think, one, we need a home. We need a, a building that places us in the community. Like a place to call home, you know, like yeah, it yeah. literally is that. I think over years we've come to realise that actually you've just got to start with what you've got. The more you start with what you've got, the more you get to give. And so um, when it comes to expansion, I think it's something that we can all contribute to. It just has to be uh, an act of obedience and an act of a desire to, um, to be part of the team, to be part of a bigger picture, to know that actually your small part and somebody else's small part will add to something a lot bigger than what you could ever do by your own. And I think it comes down to just saying, yes, God, what do you want us to do this time? Yes, we'll do it. So awesome. We love you, Pete and Rita, down in Tauranga. And that's the power of the one. And my heart would be that every single one of us discover that God actually is giving all of us an opportunity to see that what we have in our hands, placed in the hands of Jesus, makes a significant difference. And I'm gonna illustrate for you today the truth of the power of one as we see in this story when multiplied in Jesus' hands. Because I think if we can be really honest for a moment, whatever campus we may be at, we can see our little as lack, but I want you to discover, I want to discover that we're all on a journey and it's not about equal giving. It's actually about saying, God, what do I have in my hand? Yeah. Yeah. And realizing that we can make a difference. In fact, as I was doing a little bit of research, the database would suggest that here at Life, whether it's an individual, a couple, or a family, from an active point of view, we would have the opportunity to see 8,000 partners be realized. Wow. We're believing for 2,000, but we've actually got the ability whether one partner equal to family, one partner equal to couple, or one partner equal to individual, there was actually an opportunity this year that 8,000 of us wow. could say yes to trusting Jesus. Yeah, right. And so I looked at that and I said, okay, if we were to say, that there is tw 21 meals in a week. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, brilliant. If we all had 21 meals a week, this is assuming we all eat three meals a day, some people are bulking for Jesus, so they might have a few more, but <laughs> let's assume we all eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which would total 21. And we assumed that each one of us 8,000 partners decided we would trust Jesus each week this year in the next 12 months with one meal, what could take place? Now, I'm gonna assume that this one meal costs in our climate today around $25. That's an average, bear with me, it's a, might not be enough for a family of 10, <laughs> might be too much for an individual, but on average, if a one meal was $25, when you extrapolate that out, $25 times 8,000 partners each week times 52 weeks, we don't just reach $5 million. We actually blow it out of the water and what is raised is $10.4 million. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We need to capture this. For $25 a week, if every one of us said, yeah, I'm gonna trust Jesus with one meal to see impact, we wouldn't just see 35,000 Christmas boxes. Now, there would be a logistical 
challenge going on, but we could get that to 100,000 Christmas boxes. We could see not just 80,000 hot meals served, but 800,000. Like the, the, the list of possibility grows when each of us say, God, I could actually trust you. And so one meal, again, turns into a whole lot of meals. But this is where it gets crazy. I want you to capture the multiplication of Jesus. Let's come back to the one meal. One meal placed in the hands of Jesus, according to the scripture, is not one to the power of 10. Conservatively, scholars would say there was 10,000 at least there. 5,000 men plus women and children. One meal is to the power of 10,000. So watch this now. If 8,000 partners, a family, an individual, or a couple were to trust Jesus with one meal a week, that is 8,000 times 10,000. You know what that number is? Not 80,000, not 800,000, not 8 million. It would be to the impact of 80 million people each and every week. In six weeks, arguably, you could reach the entire population of New Zealand. In 12 months, you could reach 4.1 plus billion people, more than half the globe, from a little old church down in New Zealand. But we look at the one, and we don't see this. Watch me now. We see this. Or we think like Philip thought, when Jesus says where, and he's going, Philip's answering how. Well, let me think about it for a second. Jesus, if I worked really hard, I might be able to pump out 10 meals in a week. And this is where the power of the one gets realized that it's as much about you doing your bit and me doing my bit as it is all of us coming together to see the impact and the change in our generation with the reality of Jesus. I'm not making this stuff up. It's kingdom multiplication. (laughs) And I think the challenge for every single one of us, if you can hear my heart right across life, is that we don't look at our little as lack as an obstacle, but we say, God, in your hands, it's an opportunity that not only will bless 80 million people a week, but you will have enough, like the boy had enough, to eat as much as you need. (laughs) If we place our meal in the hands of Jesus. Very Very quickly, I think, three observations from this story that if you and I are to actually trust Jesus and live as he lived, live as expanders, we need number one, awareness. We need to be aware. That's why all of this information is relevant because this is what we're believing as a church we can do. There is an awareness to see opportunity over obstacle. Jesus modeled this throughout scripture that he constantly, the Bible says, had compassion on people. I'm not asking you, can you just see the numbers, but can you understand that behind every number is a life, is a story that we are going to touch, we are going to reach. But we can easily see what the need is, we need to make a decision to see what is in our hands. Expansion is an opportunity for you and I to be aware we're called in such a time as this, to trust Jesus and meet need. We need awareness. Secondly, we need willingness. A willingness to trust Jesus with our reality. Truth is, God knows us all. (laughs) He is God after all. He knows where we're at. He knows what we have. And he knows how we can be used. The Bible says he's the divine author over each and every moment. And he's currently writing your story and my story. 
The truth is we read scripture and understand God can do eternally amazing things with the little fragments of our natural worlds if we don't see them as lack, as obstacle, but opportunity in the hands of Jesus. Insignificant things always become significant when they move from our hands into Jesus' hands. So we need an awareness, we need a willingness, and then I love as the boy teaches us, we need a responsiveness. Maybe it's today, maybe it's over the next few weeks, you're gonna go on the journey of asking God, what are you challenging me to be a part of? when it comes to expansion, Lord. But the teams are gonna come and join me. I don't want you to be distracted because responsiveness is actually a key ingredient for you and I to be expanders. We need to be responsive to seed a harvest of supernatural reality. You know, it's been said that just as bees are created to create hives and ants are created to create colonies, Human and humankind are actually created to create futures. And expansion is about doing just that. Expansion is about creating a future for those that believe there is no future. Expansion is about creating an opportunity for others that are yet to discover the wonder of Jesus, step into the fullness of His grace. The expansion for you and I is an opportunity to not just be aware, not just be willing, but to respond. At some point, when we read this scripture, the boy actually had to release the food. He was aware there was a situation at hand. The Bible says he was willing, but he actually had to let go. I don't know if you've ever asked one of your kids, if you've got a few kids to share with one of the others of something that's theirs. It's quite a funny moment, because you're like, I don't want to, but dad's saying I have to, and there's not a willingness. But when there is a awareness, a willingness, there is an opportunity for a responsiveness to release. The boy had to determine at some point, you know what? I didn't dictate how this food got to me. And I'm gonna make a decision. I don't get to dictate whether this food will feed me. I'm gonna make sure that I trust Jesus and in doing so, Thousands were fed, and so was he. Whatever campus you're at, I want you to realize that the significance of this story is not just one of a physical answer to a need. Expansion is not just about physically feeding people or physically building buildings to create home for people. It's not just physically about enriching the church in New Zealand through Kingdom Partnership. Actually, expansion is about people discovering that there is a God in heaven who loves and cares for them and there is a hope in a hopeless situation. There is an opportunity. We see from this passage that not only were the multitudes fed, they came back to a point and exclaimed, surely, he is it that the Jesus they were chasing after, who was a man doing supernatural things, discovered in a moment of need being met that there wasn't just a physical answer, there was a spiritual answer. Jesus wanted to illuminate everyone at that point with the sermon he was speaking about to the reality of the fullness of the gospel that Jesus is Savior of all. In fact, if you understand who was there and we don't have time to go into it, It wasn't just the Jewish people, but it was the Gentiles alike. It was such a pivotal sermon that changed the reality of humanity once and for all, that Jesus was not just for the Jews, but he was for all. And I wonder how many people in our families, in our communities, in our city, in our nation are yet to discover that Jesus is for them. My heart, my prayer would be that everything expansion is as we willingly are aware, willingly are trusting and willingly are responding, we would see on the other side of eternity people that would say, thank you for surrendering your happy meal. Because it was your fry that fed my family. 
if it was your chicken nugget through a Christmas box that put a smile on our table and we discovered that this wasn't just a box full of sustenance, but there was someone who cared to respond. And in doing so, we've discovered the wonder of who Jesus is. And I'm praying that on the other side of expansion, on the other side of eternity, there would be the ones who discovered there was someone who cared for them, but ultimately they would discover the one who can set and save their lives. This is why Acts 20 verse 35 says, it is more blessed to give than receive, it gives greater joy. (laughs) Expansion is not just about the dollars we collectively raise, not just about the projects that money enables, and it's not really just even about mouths that get fed. It's about enabling the gospel to go forth. It's enabling people to discover God loves them. It's enabling others like you and I to stand up and stay true to their faith and follow his word, his way, his will. And ultimately expansion, as I said, is about people, but people discovering the wonder of who Jesus is. That is why the vision of this house has been the same from day one and is the same today to impact and change our generation with the reality of Jesus. That is why we do what we do. And no matter what campus you may be in, you may be here and say, man, this sounds awesome, but I don't know Jesus for myself. Well, good news, you can know him. And that's why it's more than a campaign. It's actually about people discovering Jesus. And if you're in one of our locations today, you're in this room and you say, you know what, Luke, my heart, my life is away from Christ. And can I encourage you more than expansion, the greatest decision you ever make, any of us could ever make, is a decision to say yes to Jesus. Because you discover the power of one man that roamed this earth and lived a life that took on all your sin, all your shame, all your shortcomings, all of my failures, and said, it is enough, it is finished, I got you covered. He died, he rose again to save you and to set us free. And in one moment of decision, the Bible says, you can receive the fullness of who he is. And so I'm gonna ask every head to be bowed, every eye to be closed before I hand it back to the MCs and we finish. If you're in this room, you're in any one of our locations, you're online, you say, Luke, I don't know Jesus as my personal Lord, as my personal Savior, then I don't want anyone being distracted in this moment. I I would love to pray for you. Whether you need to say yes to Jesus for the first time or you need to reconnect, recommit your life to Christ, then I'm gonna pray a prayer. I'm gonna ask all of us to pray this prayer in a moment. I'll give you the words to pray, but I'm gonna ask you to pray it like you mean it. And as you do, I'm gonna believe with you that as we pray this prayer, God's gonna enter your heart and then our MCs will let you know about a gift we'd love to give you and we're here to help. But this is the greatest decision you could make. One, I believe you'll never regret. Anyone and everyone that needs to make this decision, whatever campus you may be in, this is what it's all about, discovering the wonder of Jesus. You say, Luke, that's me. Then I'm gonna encourage you to repeat these words. I'm gonna ask all of us to pray these out loud, but I want you to pray them like you mean them. Say, God, today, I give you my life. I'm sorry for my sin and trying to do my own thing. Today, I choose you as my Lord and my Saviour. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and giving me a fresh start. I declare I'm a follower of Christ. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Come on, let's celebrate every single person that prayed that prayer. We trust that message really impacted and encouraged you today. And if you'd like to find out more about what it means to have a relationship with Jesus, then we would love to connect with you. We'd also love to invite you to come along to one of our campuses on Sunday. It's a great place to meet people and to be part of a community. So if you'd like to find out more, you can click on the link below. We hope you have a great week ahead and we look forward to seeing you again really soon.